Hello, Aluxers. This is a special series we're doing all week here at Alux, where every day we're showcasing the life of one of the most memorable mobsters. Enjoy it. Today we're looking at 15 Things You Didn't Know About Lucky Luciano. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get informed. Hello, Aluxers. Today we're talking about criminal mastermind and Italian mobster Lucky Luciano. Born in Sicily in 1897, Salvatore Luciano immigrated with his family to the United States in 1906, where he quickly saw that life wasn't fair. In order to gain power and wealth, he saw that he would have to break the law. He became the father of organized crime, managing five families and forming a commission which set the rules of gang activity and attempted to stop gang wars. As the head of the Genovese crime family, he grossed $12 million a year on average. Not bad for a poor kid from Sicily. If you're new here, welcome. Be sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram at Alux. But how about we dive in, shall we, and take a closer look at this notorious mobster with the 15 things you didn't know about Lucky Luciano. Number 1. He got the name Lucky by surviving a brutal attack that should have left him dead. In 1929, Lucky Luciano was abducted, beaten, and stabbed and left for dead on a beach in Staten Island. Fortunately for him, a police officer found him and took him to the hospital. The men involved were never caught, but it was widely speculated they were sent by a rival crime family run by Joe the Boss, Masseria, who was having a turf war with Lucky's boss, Salvatore Maranzano. Though the suspects were never found, Lucky helped to organize a grisly end for Masseria a few years later. Lucky arranged to have dinner with Masseria, and then while the men played cards, he excused himself to go to the bathroom, which was the cue for his henchmen to rush in and shoot Masseria to death. Number 2. He was the wealthiest and most powerful crime boss of his time. In 1925, Lucky was worth $4 million, which would be worth around $60 million today. Mind you, this is after he paid off various police and politicians with a whopping $8 million so he could continue his racketeering business. That would equal out to a $114 million bribe today. Number 3. He started his career in organized crime at just 9 years old. Lucky immigrated to the Lower East Side of New York from Sicily in 1906 when he was just nine years old. Speaking no English, he struggled in school, finally dropping out in 1914. He did, however, start a protection racket as a child, making other school children pay him so they wouldn't get beaten up. What would happen if they didn't pay him, you ask? Well, then he would beat them up. Number four. He lived in the extravagant Waldorf Astoria Towers. When Lucky finally started cashing in on his life of crime, he decided he wanted a more upscale place to live in New York City, so he rented out some of the rooms at the famous Waldorf Astoria Towers for $800 a month, the equivalent to almost $12,000 a month today. With a parking garage and private elevator to bring him to his suite, he easily evaded the law. He also bribed the front desk clerk with $200 a month to tip him off if any policemen came looking for him. Number 5. He raked in over $120 million a year. Equal to almost $120 million a year, Lucky Luciano raked in millions from prostitution, heroin, protection money, and selling liquor during Prohibition. Part of his downfall was trying to explain to a jury how he was able to live so extravagantly while claiming to only make $22,000 a year. Number 6. He was tapped by the United States to use his connections in Italy to help win World War II. During World War II in 1942, 
The United States naval intelligence needed help getting opposing forces off of Sicily. They knew the Mafia's power was what ran the small island, so they asked Lucky to use his connections to find out who was controlling the waterfront in Sicily. The whole plan was a success for the U.S., and a result, in 1946, Lucky was released, providing he did not resist deportation to Italy. Number 7. After that, to avoid deportation to Italy, Lucky fled to Cuba and lived in the most luxurious hotels. Lucky fled to Cuba, where he and his friend and mafioso companion Meyer Lansky had built a luxurious playground for the rich to escape to. He stayed at the Nacional, a 467-room luxury hotel that would put Las Vegas hotels to shame. Casinos, pools, state-of-the-art lighting, furniture, and design were like nothing anyone had ever seen. While there, he took under his wing a young Frank Sinatra. The two became very close, having come from the same village in Sicily. With Lucky financing Sinatra's career and Sinatra acting as a lure for the rich and famous to play in Cuba, Havana became a playground for the wealthy. It was no secret that Cuba was the gateway for mobsters like Lucky to bring heroin to the U.S., but in 1946, Cuba served as the hub to avoid being deported back to Sicily. While in Cuba, he arranged the Havana Conference, bringing the Mafia's control of the global drug trade to reality. Number 8. Meyer Lansky was the financial mastermind behind Lucky's fortune. Meyer Lansky, best known for being the head of the Jewish mob, was a close ally of Lucky Luciano. He had kept a close eye on the federal government's dealings with mobsters and perfected a way to launder money so gangsters would no longer be caught with money that had been gotten in an illegal way. It was Lansky who encouraged the development of hotels, casinos, and other businesses so mob bosses could clean their money. The two men built a successful money laundering empire in Cuba through their hotels and casinos, while at the same time pumping drugs from Cuba back into the United States. Number 9. A $1 silver certificate signed by Lucky was auctioned off for $8,750. The famed Christie's Auction House put a $1 certificate signed by Lucky Luciano in 1955 up for auction expecting to get around $1,000 for it. But when the auction hammer finally fell, the price was over $8,000. More recently, someone went to the famed Pawn Stars Pawn Shop in Las Vegas, claiming they had Lucky's pinky ring. Unfortunately, the authenticity of it could not be confirmed. If it had been deemed as real, it possibly could have fetched up to a million dollars at auction. Number 10. He ran a prostitution syndicate worth over $12 million. Lucky became public enemy number one for the state of New York. He was wanted for running a prostitution ring that was estimated to have brought in $12 million. The manhunt followed him all the way across the country. The special prosecutor made it his mission to track down Lucky and bring him back to New York to face racketeering charges. Number 11. He almost lost it all after a drug deal gone bad. In the early 20s, Lucky was involved with a drug deal gone bad, which damaged his reputation in the criminal world. To fix the situation, Luciano wound up buying 200 expensive tickets to the famed Jack Dempsey Luis Firpo boxing match in the Bronx and sent half to top gangsters and half to top politicians in New York City. He then went out and bought the most expensive tailored suit he could and attended the match. It worked like a charm and he was back in business, reputation saved. Number 12. He had meals specially prepared for him in prison. When Lucky was in Clinton Correctional Facility, the authorities reserved a special kitchen where another inmate prepared meals just for Lucky. While he was there, he convinced authorities to build a church, the only freestanding one at a prison in the United States. Number 13. When another crime boss tried to take over the Luciano crime business, Lucky had him arrested. 
In 1957, while Luciano was still in Sicily, crime boss Genovese got all the bosses together in New York to discuss his takeover of the Luciano crime family. Unfortunately, things went terribly wrong, and law enforcement wound up raiding the meeting and arresting over 60 high-ranking officers of the Cosa Nostra. Immediately after, Luciano called a meeting with two of the big crime family heads, Costello and Gambino, and decided to put Genovese out of business. Luciano paid $100,000 to implicate Genovese in a drug deal. His scheme worked, and Genovese was sent to prison for 15 years, while Luciano held on to the control of all the crime families in the United States. Number 14. He was impeccably dressed in tailored suits and handmade shoes until the day he died. Lucky was known to have all of his suits tailored, sometimes ordering them a dozen at a time. He also owned more silk underwear than any of his cohorts had ever seen. He had a reputation of putting mobsters in suits and white shirts, and even giving away suits and hats to anyone who looked like they needed a boost. Though his taste was expensive, it was understated, and it's said that he dressed more like a banker or businessman instead of a mafia king. Number 15. In 1998, Time magazine named him one of the most influential builders and titans of the 20th century. Lucky Luciano was named one of the most influential men of the 20th century. Of Lucky, they said, quote, He downsized, he restructured, and he used Standard & Poor's as much as Smith & Wesson to change forever the face of organized crime. This is true. Luciano changed the way mobsters ran the world, creating a global drug economy and working closely with government officials and law enforcement to get it done. Well, Aluxers, that's a wrap on Italian-American gangster Lucky Luciano. Do you think you could have accepted his bribes if you were a cop back then? Let us know in the comments. And of course, for sticking with us all the way to the end, we've got a little bit of a bonus for you. Here it is. Number 16. He never had children. Italians have always been known for having big families, so it's really surprising that Luciano never had children. This is odd for the time period and the fact he came from a culture that embraced having a big family. It also meant he would have no one to leave his organized crime family business to. When asked of why he never had children, Luciano replied, I didn't want no son of mine to go through life as the son of Luciano the gangster. That's one thing I still hate Dewey for, making me a gangster in the eyes of the world. Dewey was the man who successfully sent him to jail. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxers. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpicked these videos, which we recommend you watch next. Thank you for being an Aluxer, and we'll see you back tomorrow.